students of class 9 assalamu alaikum and good morning to you and welcome you all today's class today you know now bangladesh and global studies your subject is bangladesh and global studies Today's class will be conducted by MD Hafizur Rahman, lecturer, Department of Civics, Master and College. So I am, I welcome you all again. Today, I am going to discuss a new topic, new chapter. That is chapter six, the state, citizenship, and law. The state, citizenship, and law. It's a very important chapter for you because. This is very much related to with us with our regular or daily life. Okay, so I think you will enjoy this chapter because see the state, citizenship, law, everything is very much known to us, right? And uh, we know the things, but we we'll know the things in a specific manner, in a conscious way. We will learn these things if by this chapter. Okay, the state. All of the people we are living in a state. We are the citizen of a country of a state, and everywhere, every time, we are maintaining the law. Sometimes we are breaking the law also, right? And for breaking the law, we are getting punishment also, right? So we know the things in a sharp, in a subconscious way. But today, or by learning this chapter, we will know the things in a conscious way. Okay, so. Today's topic is actually <coughs> the concept of the state and the elements of the state. So first of all, we we'll know the concept of the state. In the ancient time and the Middle Ages, the state was considered as an organization formed by the God. See, the people thought the state is a organization is an organization formed by the God. Is it true? Is it correct? No, because this is wrong. The people they have created the state for their necessity, right? The people they have created the state for the necessity of the people, right? So, modern political thinkers explain the state as an organization to provide common welfare. That means. The state is a welfare organization. It's a political organization, and their main motto, their motto is to uh, confirm the welfare of the people, confirm the safety and security of the people of that country, of that state. A state never evolved suddenly. The state emerged as time changed. People make the state. So, the uh, thinking of the previous time, ancient and the Middle Ages, that was fully wrong, right? So. Mm -hmm. That is confirmed. People has created the state for their welfare, for the well-being of the people, right? Okay. Then we will know the definition of the state. In your book, you will get some definition according to the book. First of all, Aristotle uncle. That means uh, Aristotle, the father of political science. Aristotle. According to Aristotle. The state is a union of families and villages having for its end and perfect and self-sufficing life. Okay, so according to Aristotle, the state is formed by the by some villages and some included some families and villages so it's very uh, narrow con concept right because nowadays you can see uh, in a state lots of families and lakhs of families right or more than lakhs of families then thousands of villages then uh, uh, lots of cities then towns then districts divisions right it's a vast area vast things but during that time, when the Aristotle was there, that means on that time, the state was very small. There was city state. A city, it was a state. It was a state because a city uh, consists of some families and villages. 
that time there was city state and in a city 100 200 or 300 people were living so according to that concept aristotle has given uh, that definition that was correct on that time but nowadays it's not correct because uh, a state contains lots of villages thousands of villages right many towns cities many peoples also so according to macaver rm macaver the state is an association who is acting through law as promulgated by a government endowed the to uh, this end with coercive power maintaining within a community territorially dem uh, democratic the universal external condition of social order okay so but professor garner has given the complete definition and most acceptable definition of the state according to professor garner the state is community of person more or less numerous permanently occupying a definite portion of territory independent of which the great body of inheritance inhabitants render habitual obedience so here we can see some characteristics of the state that means some people will be there and it um, uh, numerous people will be there they will live permanently and that place there will be a territory that area and that people of that area will be independent and there will be a uh, authority and the people of that area will be loyal to that authority if we describe or explain this definition these things we are getting right that means we are getting the definition getting the characteristics or the elements of the state here huh? so you have to memorize this uh, definition very nicely because it's important for your exam okay boys okay boys and girls that means the students thank you so these are the things about the concept of the state now we'll learn about the elements of the state first of all the elements of the state there are four essential elements of the state how many essential elements of the state four essential elements of the state first of all the people the specific geographical territory or area the government and the sovereignty these four elements are needed to form a dear students you have to memorize these four elements very nicely first of all the people the specific geographical territory or the area the government and the sovereignty these four elements are needed it's essential these are essential to form a state without any of these we cannot form or the state cannot be formed okay so basic elements are four first of all people we have to know the primary element of the state is people which one is the primary element of the state this is the question people is the primary element of the state because people made the state for their necessity right so let's say people is needed first without people if all the uh, elements are there but there is no people there will be not no state right like some uh, area we can see there is no people so there is no state also people is needed first first element is people there is no prerequisite to number of people to form a state that means people is needed it may less or it may more this is not the fact it doesn't matter the people of that country or the state can be more than 100 crore it may be less than 1 lakh 5000 no problem doesn't matter people is needed but not that means not specific it it should be specific that means 500 people are living in a country no problem it may be a state people is needed more or less doesn't matter number of people can be some crore even can be few thousands the people of china and india are more than 100 crore san marino has only 33225 people monaco monaco has 38000 people you know vatican city nauru some very small 
uh, countries of the world, small states of the world, they have very less population. But in the same time, we can see China, they have more than 100 crore people. In India, or neighboring country, they have more than 100 people. Huh? So, people is needed, more or less, doesn't matter. Is it clear? Then, the specific geographical territory. The specific geographical territory or area is so the second mandatory element of the state. A specific geographical territory or area is needed. This is the second element. Okay. So what is the second element of the state to form the state? A specific geographical territory or area. Every state is surrounded by a specific geographical border, right? If there is a state, you will find a border, right? We have a map that is our border, that is our borderline. So geographical territory means land, sea and air not only our land area geographical territory means our land area including our air and our uh, water area right sea sea level that means uh, our water land also included our geographical territory okay so this is second element and territory includes land sea and air you have to Remember the things, territory includes land, sea and air, that means water, land and air also, our uh, geographical territory. Every state establishes a security system based on its border. You know, our border there is BGB, right? Previous BDR, now BGB, they are uh, security. They are maintaining the security of the border. Every state have security system in border. Huh. And geographical land can be big or small, in same like the people. Geographical area can be small or big, no problem. It may be very small, it may be very big, no problem. Like, you know, uh, India, they have huge land area. China, Russia, they have huge land area. Like, in the same time, you can see some countries of the world, they have very small land area, a small uh, area, a small, their geographical location is very small, like Switzerland, Darussalam, Brunei, they have very small area, hmm? but they are independent country, they are state, and some island country of the world, like Japan, Malaysia, Indonesia, you know, Maldives, their island, includes one or more than one island, that is also state. There are uh, like uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, in Japan, Maldives, these are island state. These are also a state. That is actually small states. Hmm? So, second mandatory element is geographical territory. I think you have understood these things. Third of all, government. Government is needed. Okay, before stating government, I will tell uh, things. According to Professor Garner, if we consider the state as a body of life, government is its brain. I'm telling again, if we consider the state as a body of life, government is its brain. What do you understand by these things? What do you understand by this sentence? Suppose, brain is our decision maker, right? Every decision comes from our brain. If tomorrow, where you are going? What will you do? Every decision taken by the brain. So, our body is bigger than the brain, but the body, what will the body do? Everything will considered, everything will decided by the brain. Same, our country, our country's development, welfare of the people, everything will decided. Foreign policy, everything will, will, will be decided by the government, right? Government is needed. It is the third essential element. There are three divisions to run the government, law department, administrative department, and judiciary. Uh, these three departments. Along with these three departments, every government of the world are running. Right? In a democratic system, the people form the government by a general election. You know, in like Bangladesh, we are giving vote. The people of that country, they are giving vote. And by giving vote, they will elect the government this is the democratic system and and government can be different in different countries also different right uh, socialist government then democratic huh? this type of government uh, government system are there in the world you know many types of government are there in the world so in bangladesh this is democratic system okay so 
am telling again so government if the state is considered as the body of life government is its brain because government will take the decision what will do what type of activities they will do for the country like uh, if you think your classroom is a state teacher director madam or director sir vice principal sir principal sir they are the authority they are government think without teacher what will you do you are four student in the class there is no teacher so what will you do there will be no classroom that will be i'm not i'm not going to tell that things you know better than me what will be there like this without government i said cannot run because people will be very much indisciplined so control the people government is needed control the people and for the discipline to maintain the law and order of the country government is needed i think you have understood these things you have understood very good and final stage and last element the principal element of the state is sovereignty all the elements are very much needed but principal element is sovereignty because without uh, this sovereignty no country can be a state no area can be a state right like before 1971 we had people we had geographical area we had a government also but we were not a state because we had no sovereign power we were not sovereign we have no sovereignty right only the absence of sovereignty bangladesh was not an state before 1971 have you got it the sovereignty is sovereignty means supreme power the meaning of the word sovereignty is the highest and the absolute power highest power government of that kind of bangladesh they have highest power no country of the world can control our government the government can do anything and all the people inside the country they are loyal to the government that is sovereignty that is sovereignty because government has government can take any decision for the welfare of the country okay and, and the people of bangladesh or people of any country they will be loyal to the to the government and no other country can tell or control that government that is called sovereignty everyone is bound to obey the law of sovereignty the sovereignty power sovereignty power has both the inner and the outer en- entity that means two types of sovereignty internal sovereignty and external sovereignty internal sovereignty means government will be powerful and all the people of that area that state they will be loyal to the government and all the institutions also that is internal sovereignty and external sovereignty no other countries of the world they cannot control us they cannot attack us government is free government is independent of that state that is external sovereignty okay and the sovereignty will not be damaged by the change of the government very important point suppose government is changing government will be changed right you know in democratic system after 4 years or 5 years government will be changed normally so government will be changed government may be changed but sovereignty will be unchanged this is unchanged if any country any area they uh, uh, they can achieve the sovereign power that will not be damaged that will be unchanged they will be sovereign for 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 last moment also right so sovereignty will be unchanged but government may change government may change after every 5 years after every 4 years doesn't matter okay so i think you have understood these four things uh that means that means the people the specific geographical territory the government and the sovereignty if you don't understand anything you will talk to your respective teacher okay so uh here is cw for you five question is here very very easy question sir here so you will write the answer and those who have uh, la- those who have heard the heard my voice and those who have watched the video very carefully they can write the answer within a minute within one or two minutes so um, 
you write the things right now and submit to your teacher subjective teacher and hw describe the principal elements of the stage uh, by four elements you know one is principal element what is the principal element of the state and describe you will describe that principal elements thank you very much see you next assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah